I obviously like Cooper Cup, you know, goes for 300 yards or something. It's probably not going to be a good day for the Cincinnati Bengals, but we've seen Cooper Cup like get there for fantasy purposes and have good days in 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 games that the Rams just have lost. I mean, you know, going back to the San Francisco games, I mean, during the regular season, I mean, Cooper Cup, you know, went for over 100 yards against San Francisco. And, and I mean, they, they still lost the game, but it's just it's, in terms of how the yards come, I think is the big thing. If the Bengals can limit Cooper Cup from getting those back breaking like 50 yard touchdown passes, I think that's the most important thing. Cooper Cup is going to get catches in this game. He's probably going to even get some chunk plays. It's just, can they contain Cooper Cup from like changing the, the, the pace of the game, changing the momentum of the game from those big plays? Because we saw against Tampa Bay, they didn't do that late in the game. We saw last week too against San Francisco, they weren't so good. So that's really the big thing I think with Cooper Cup is just limiting the big plays. So I, mean, I guess the answer is yes and no. You know, Cooper Cup can still have a big game and the Rams can lose, but sure. I mean, he's such an important player. The Bengals can keep him out of the end zone. I think that's the biggest thing. Pierce, I know what happens three seasons ago doesn't necessarily impact this game, but his best game of his career did come against the Bengals in week eight of 2019. Yeah, I think it is an overreaction that he can have a big game and they can definitely still lose this game. I mean, you look against the 49ers, he had 11 catches, 142 yards, two touchdowns. That's pretty amazing. They still almost lost to a 49ers team with Jimmy Garoppolo at quarterback with Eli Mitchell running for less than 50 yards. So he can go off and it may not be a big deal. I think we are just enamored with the box scores that he's putting up and just assuming, oh, well, they're winning games and he's got these big numbers. It must be because of him. And as Jeff mentioned, against the Buccaneers, he had, what, 180 receiving yards? Well, 120 of that came on two plays. You take those out and, you know, <laughs> you don't see the result. And even with those numbers, they still barely won that game as well with a massive number. I definitely believe that Cup can go off again, 10 catches, 150 yards, and they still lose this game. Okay, Matt, overreaction here that if they can't slow down Cup, they'll lose. Yeah, I'm on the same page as these guys. I mean, they're not going to slow down Cup. His over-under for receptions is eight and a half, yards is 104 and a half. Cup is almost certainly not going to have a bad game unless he gets injured. So I guess, yeah, you, you if that were true, then the Bengals would have no chance to win. Like they, they aren't entirely relying on stopping Cooper Cup. What they are relying on is forcing some turnovers because I do think the Rams are the better team. So the Bengals are probably gonna need to get a little bit lucky here to win this game or just keep him out of the end zone. If they can be really strong down in the red zone and Cup gets some big plays, maybe even goes for 150, 200 yards and the Rams are settling for field goals. That's the way to do it. So I agree with these guys completely. Just keep him from having the backbreaking huge plays that kind of end the game for you. Um, Cup could have 150, and if he doesn't score, I actually think that's a win for the Bengals. So they don't need to slow him down. They just need to stop touchdowns.